Hey guys, welcome to RP Feed. In our last session, we have seen how you can install Power Automate Desktop. So in this session, we'll be dealing with the flow designer, the workspace you get for building your flow and building your pot. So I have created one test flow. Let me edit this and open this for you. And we will see all the options that are available while you are building the flow. So this is now open. And let me uh, guide you through all the uh, options that are available for us in this uh, code interface or designer works. These are standard menu options like file where you can save your flow. In edit option, you can uh, like go to line, clear all the selections if you have selected anything. So there are a lot of options. And this is debug menu where you can debug your flow. Uh, you you have to click on this line to get the breakpoint. And once you get the breakpoint, then you can enable the debug feature. Once you uh, now after enabling the debugging, if you run this, it will it will debug uh, debug your uh, list of st statements like your code Let me, yeah, and you can click back to remove the debug debugger breakpoints then you have tools in tools you have recorder option we'll come to that uh, in a while and then you have uh, browser extensions for uh, the three browsers edge chrome and firefox after that in view you can uh, click on variables ui elements image and default layout which is shown in the right side of your uh, designer workspace okay then you have help to get the documentation, uh, Microsoft Learn, and all the links related to uh, learning or exploring Power Automate. So let's uh, focus on the uh, designer workspace area because this is what you'll be working on. So currently I have built one main flow. So in main flow, I have written, uh, I just wanted to show you a few of the actions. That's why I have already uh, 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 written them because in if you want to uh, try this feature like go to line so if you click on this and if i want to navigate to suppose uh, your line number nine is showing some error and you want to directly navigate to that line so i can type that in line number and it will just take the control to that particular line for this flow i mean currently it's very small so it is not making any sense but uh, imagine a real use case or a production level board where you have uh, more number of lines and then it will be easy for you to uh, go to that line right and then uh, we have the in the left pane we have all the list of actions available for us to build uh, the flow so for example loops conditionals i'll be covering each of them in uh, uh, upcoming sessions where i create videos on pertaining to the actions and how you can use them so keep watching and if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do subscribe and then coming to the top menu again you get here option to save run run the flow save the flow uh, debugging options and then again recorder option Right. F using this recorder option, you can record the screens uh, and capture the elements. In the right hand side, you have a, a variable section. So in the rightmost side, you have this variable section, UI element section and the image section. Coming to the variable section, you can if you have n number of variables declared here, like flow variables and input output variables, you can search them. For example, let me search fruits. So it will pop up here. Now, what is input and output variable? So basically from here, from this icon, you can create input and output variables. Input are uh, variables as the name suggests are those which will be act, which will act as a ent uh, entry data for this flow. For example, you need to pass some, some of the configuration uh, variables directly uh, before starting, like as soon as your main flow starts, you need some of the data, input data, so that you can pass from uh, the orchestrator, like powerautomate.com. So over there, if you define here some of the input, a variable let's say uh, which environment you want to run this so if we can configure dev u8 and prod environment in that config input variable and we can take that value from outside of this flow similarly there is an output type of a variable uh, which helps you to pass the information back from this flow like if you want to uh, store any result uh, of your uh, of your flow of your bot so once your bot is successful you want to capture some information and pass back to the your orchestrator right so in that case, you can declare output variable and how you create that you simply write an output variable here and the external name. So this external name is uh, what it will appear uh, uh, like for the users who is seeing from the outside, like from the orchestrator or control room, whatever you can call that. And you can declare the data type, whether you're passing number uh, or text or any other type of data, right? You can also describe what exactly uh, this is storing and if you want to make it sensitive for example you want uh, it as a mask like as a password field right if you can then you can mark it as a sensitive data as well let me save this so this is my output variable and this is my input variable 
then we have the flow variables so flow variables are those which are uh, you can say local uh, variables that are uh, the scope of those variables is uh, within this uh, flow so you can see here fruits uh, i have declared fruits here i have declared um, the button press and all these are all default variables which are created when i was uh, dragging a few of the actions here then uh, this is all about the variable section uh, then coming quickly to this part and then we can explore the other uh, like ui elements and image also uh, from subflow like so what is the purpose of subflow so you have this main flow uh, so this is consider this as your entry point or a main task and under this main task you want to call child task or sub task so this is what uh, subflow uh, allows you to do so for example i want to build one uh, child task uh, the responsibility of that uh, task would be just to log like whenever i want to log some data of, uh, from what perspective i want to call that particular task or i want uh, to set a configuration so in one flow i want to create a configuration so let's say i create one subflow which i would call configuration so in this configuration uh, flow i'll i'll have some i'll read some config file or data from the config file right so this is be, this will be my initializing all the configuration level uh, variables so um, suppose i have an xml file where i have kept all the configuration uh, related data then i can read all that here uh, using the xml action right if you want to uh, if your config file is an excel config file then you can read uh, that data from like following the excel actions so this is basically uh, my flow where i am separating it from the main and then uh, or re uh, uh, reading all this i can then particularly call it here so how do i call it here using subflow uh, action right run subflow if i call this run subflow so it gives me uh, it asks me uh, which subflow to call so i will give it configuration variable so as soon as my main flow so this is my entry point of my uh, bot uh, so whenever i run this it will first call the configuration it will set all the variables or whatever i have uh, uh, coded in the configuration flow and then it will follow the next steps so uh, for segregating your code and uh, and uh, like making your code readable and basically modularize your code this this is very good option you can you can uh, you can code multiple flows and then integrate them and call them in the main task so uh, for example if you want to log into sap you can create a subflow which just do uh, just takes the uh, input from the user and uh, basically just log into the sap and return back the control similarly if you want to uh, export some data so you can create that much piece of uh, uh, action in that particular subflow and integrate it in the main flow in that way your main flow will look uh, very clean and you're just calling individual and uh, individual modules or individual sub tasks right so that was total uh, that was the entire concept of subflow then coming back to the layer ui element so if you click here add ui element if you want to capture the screen element like sap screen or you want to do a ui automation then for that you use this particular uh, option so once you click the add ui element it gives you this uh, uh, picker where you can hold control and a left click of your mouse and then once you're done you can click on done so it will capture uh, the element currently i do not have any uh, application open one but uh, once i'm uh, creating like once we are doing a session on uh, how to uh, work with ui elements then i'll be covering this so yeah and then we have uh, this image images option so you can capture uh, data from images so that will show up here and then at the bottom you see a status bar where it says status ready when you run the uh, run the flow the bot it will show the current status of like flow is running flow is uh, initializing whatever it is if you face any errors while running the flow then there's there will be an error window shown here right it it shows you like how which uh what are the selected actions if you select multiple actions then it will count uh, increase the count and then what are the total actions available in this uh, main flow right uh, how many and uh, sub flows are there all the count it is showing and the delay which you specify over here by default it is 100 milliseconds you can increase them decrease them yeah depending on your need so i think yeah that's pretty much about uh, the flow designer workspace and yeah if you like this video please hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel we'll be up coming with a lot of uh, sessions on each and every actions and other um, features of power automate desktop thanks for watching have a great day